Welcome back to the channel. Today we continue our setting up your spot device series. Part one was getting started on the system, getting an account created and getting the firmware updated. Part two is to get the messages set up. So when you hit one of these buttons here, the messages go to the right place. So I'm going to show you exactly how to set those up. First thing, once you've logged into your account, click on the My Devices option and you will see your new device on the left there. If you click on that, it takes you to a screen, various settings that you can change, and your message profiles down here. Now, I already have a default message profile set up, so I'm going to create a new profile and then work through each of these and just show you what you have to do. Click on the message profile, it tells me which one is active, and I just want to create a new one. We're just going to call it new profile. Save that. Now to change the messages in here you need to assign it as the de as the active one first. So currently we've got the tick next to default so you have to assign the new profile as your active one and now you can see new profile has the tick. So once we have that assigned we can change all of these. So if I click on the first one the check-in message. The check-in message is what happens when you press the OK button on your spot. You press and hold this, it will send a message that corresponds to the check-in button on the system. As you can see it just says it's the default message so all I typically do is traveling OK, all is good. And I would typically use this at the end of the day, finish writing, hit the button, uh, and lets people know that I'm stopped for the day and everything's fine. Now you have to add the recipients. So who are you going to send this message to? It will default to your email, I believe, uh, that you use when you set up, but you can just add another email. So you can add in an email, test1 at gmail.com. There we go. If we can, we want to add a mobile number to this, you select the country, you select the, and then you put in the number. And that's it. So now, if I hit the OK button, I will get a message, will go to the emails that are listed, and an SMS message will go to the mobile that's listed as well. So they'll get the message, they'll also get the location where you are, they can click on the location, and it will show them a map of where you are. Hit save on this, otherwise you'll lose your settings, your changes. Save, then you work through the next message. So the next one is a custom message. The custom message is the one that's over on the left hand side of the device. Now this one, I typically have this one set as I am delayed for an hour. I will put into the recipients all, the, all of my writing buddies. So that if I'm out and I get a flat tire and they've all moved on and they're now in town having lunch, I can hit that button and they know that I will you know, be with them soon enough. I don't need help. I don't need assistance. It's all good. So typically it is, Keith is delayed for one hour. And that's it. Save that, add some mobile numbers. So this one I, I do update you know, depending on the ride and who I'm riding with. Under this little flap here, this one here with the two hands, that's the help button. So that's the third one on this list here. So this one I would use for a mechanical breakdown and I do need assistance, but it's not life threatening. I would just set this to this message. I require assistance at this location. Add in the recipients. So for this one, I might have someone back at home um, who may, who's maybe watching where I am or someone close to where I'm going to be riding so that if I do require assistance they can come out with a ute or a trailer or something and pick me up. Now with all of these messages it's really important that you tell the people in the recipients what the messages are and what they mean. So if they get an okay message they know what that means. If they get a require assistance message that they know what is expected of them. The last message is the SOS button. That's the one that's under the SOS flap here. It's the red button. This one is for life-threatening situations. 
So for the SOS message, there's no message that you can set here. This one simply has the full name of the person and their phone number and their secondary contact, a primary emergency contact and a secondary emergency contact. Now if you hit that button, the people are first going to try and ring the primary contact, which is you know the user to say, you know, is this is this correct? Have you do you actually require assistance? If they don't get onto that, they'll go to the secondary one. If they don't get onto that, then they'll go to the emergency contacts all the while trying to work out whether this is a true message or not. It wouldn't be the first time that your kids have probably picked these things up and hit the button in the back seat of the car or whatever. So that's what they will do first. They'll work through the list, work out if this is true, and then they will initiate a search and rescue. So once you've set all of those things, click save on all that, and then that profile is all set up and that's your message is done. Another thing you might like to do is have different profiles for different types of trips that you're on. So I typically have a couple of different profiles set up. I will have one set for when I'm on the bike and I might have one set for when I'm on a four-wheel drive trip. Different set of recipients, different messages, but it's easy enough to just switch profiles depending on what I'm doing and you don't have to keep going in and changing everything all the time. You just have different profiles set. Part three of this series will cover the mapping side of the spot tracker, how to use the spot versions of the maps and how to use the, the simpler version on Flytrace. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.